press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss another update. Hello students, we are back with the second rule uh, that is uh, second unit that is extension of British rule here in India. In the previous classes if you remember we have studied about the anglo maratha wars and how they developed or how they conquered the Maratha kingdom. I hope you remember till here. In today's class uh, after the British has occupied a certain area here in India they have also gone to the other side of India and to conquer uh, those places too. In today's class, we are going to study the next Governor General of India uh, along with the Anglo-Sikh War. Now, before I get into Anglo-Sikh War, I want you to know some uh, details or some background why that Anglo-Sikh War began. If you don't know the background, very uh, difficult for you to understand uh, the Anglo-Sikh war but if you know the background it will be very very easy for you to comprehend what I am going to tell you. If you uh, remember the three Anglo-Maratha wars today there will be one Anglo-Sikh war and uh, what the next governor general after Lord Wellesley does here in India. Before I uh, get into what's written on the board I hope you have uh, read the textbook and that's very very important after each class I want you to read what's happening in the class that day that will be easier for you than uh, piling up everything till the end of the lesson and today we're going to finish this lesson so uh, second lesson will be over all right let's get into uh, the background of Anglo Sikh War. Now that the Britishers had conquered the Maratha kingdom, the other side, they also wanted to go to the northern part. They also wanted to conquer Punjab and other places. And that's what broke the Anglo Sikh War. Uh, British started ruling around 1818. They went on to 1857 till the first war of independence that India had. They were ruling India. I hope you got that much. What did they, how did they conquer and uh, what are the major places they conquered were Sindh, Awad and some smaller states. Sindh, Awad and some other smaller states were these uh, major thing, major uh, territories that they captured or conquered. Let me get into uh, the background of Anglo-Sikh war now. Sardar Maha Singh, okay, he was the king at that point of time. He was the king at that point of time. But as uh, as he died, as he died, his son Ranjit Singh, Ranjit Singh was 10 years old when Sardar Maha Singh died. Did you understand this much? Ranjit Singh was Maha Singh's son. He was 10 years old when the king died. Now as uh, the tradition goes, if the king dies, his son takes over the throne. Ranjit Singh had to uh, take over the throne but he was uh, given some kind of training before he uh, went on to take the throne. As he did, as he was uh, uh, growing older and as he realized what the Britishers are going to do, he felt that he has to create friendship with them than enmity with the uh, Britishers. Isn't it all the other kingdoms or all the other provinces, what they were doing? They were uh, having enmity towards the Britishers. But Ranjit Singh thought, I must not uh, have enmity towards the Britishers, rather I must make them my friends and that will be the most easiest thing for me to rule my kingdom. So what he did, he went on to uh, sign a treaty with the Britishers known as Treaty of Friendship. Did you understand this? In 1809 with the Britishers. Treaty of Friendship, Treaty of Friendship with the Britishers in 1809. And with this treaty, with this treaty, he gave a condition saying that we shall be friends and not enemies anymore. That means I will help you in my kingdom here. In turn, when you are in India, help me throughout by ruling the kingdom. That was the treaty that they signed. That's what I've written here again. They didn't have enmity with, among the Britishers and he was a secular leader that's it uh, that uh, what I mean by secular is he accepted all the religions that were 
present at that point of time and he had uh, people of all religions in his court he was also trying to uh, give them a greater post give them a post of higher ministers who could uh, lead his kingdom he was a secular reader open to all religions and he was not only to uh, his sikh religion sikh is uh, sikh he was a sikh person sikh okay sikh person and he was open to all the religion that's what i mean by secularism after he uh, as he was growing up as he was uh, uh, trying to understand the policies of the kingdom or understand the policies of how he has to rule what kind of administration he has to do he tried to find out a sikh independent sikh state in punjab and he ruled till his death in 1839 did you understand this much he in a founded a independent sikh state and he ruled till his de uh, death in 1839 now with his death begins the anglo sikh war till his, till he was there why was there no enmity why was there no uh, problem because of the treaty that they had signed which was the treaty treaty of friendship in 1809 with the britishers that we shall not have enmity but we shall have friends as soon as he died in 1839 what happened the britishers wanted to fight let's go to the anglo sikh war and let's see what has happened in the anglo sikh war today again i want you to read and with that because we'll be finishing the second lesson as i will be going for that it will be easy for you to connect one lesson to the other it's all an uh, interconnection that is there from the first lesson to the second second to the third Okay let's begin the Anglo Sikh war Anglo is Britishers Now when did Ranjit Singh died 1839 with that began the Anglo Sikh war Now uh, as i write in points it will be easier for you to understand this war first point this uh, there was a political uh, problem that earlier there was no problem because there was this friendship uh, treaty of friendship isn't it which was signed after which came the enmity saying that who will rule this kingdom who is going to take or who is going to be the supreme power of ruling this territory here in punjab and the britishers uh, didn't want to lose any chance of conquering that kingdom because there was no other ruler who was very nice who was a friend to them others are all considered to be enemies and that's what because of the political uh, problem or political I, i'll write it as a political issue okay for you to understand it easily okay because of the political issue now this anglo sikh war broke out in punjab because of the political issue why did it began at and how uh, after uh, what point of time did it began it began after the death of ranjit it began after the death of ranjit singh these are the two points did you understand there was a lot of political issue after the death of ranjit singh and the uh, the war broke out in punjab his death was in 1839 what is the third point now the british tried to what did the british try to do british tried to invade punjab i was i am repeatedly telling the same thing so that you get it through your uh, understanding british tried to invade which place which place had political issue and which place they wanted to conquer 
Punjab. Now, how did they do? They also wanted to end this treaty of friendship that was there because Ranjit Singh is no more, isn't it? And who will continue the friendship that is there? That is not going to happen. Now, they wanted to invade Punjab and uh, because of this treaty of friendship, they wanted to remove or they wanted to spoil, they wanted to violate, they wanted to, they didn't want to have the treaty of friendship anymore. So, what did they do? They wanted to violate. What? Violate the treaty of friendship. Now, you must remember they had this treaty of friendship with Ranajit Singh. They wanted to violate this and then the Anglo-Sikh war broke out or the Anglo-Sikh war began with this kind of thing that the Britishers did. Let me write the fourth point here. Now, uh, 1845 in December, this war broke out, okay, broke out between who? Between the Britishers, between the British and the kingdom of Punjab who were ruling them, okay. This war broke out because of the violation of the treaty and in December 18. 45 it began with the uh, kingdom of uh, people ruling in Punjab and the English East India Company or the Britishers. Let's see what's the fifth point. These uh, I told you Ranjit Singh was a very secular leader and he was very open to religion that's the same meaning and that is why everybody had a sense of uh, feeling towards the king or uh, duty towards the king saying that he is our king and we must protect him. So, what did the other uh, people of other religions do? Especially the Hindus, Hindus, Sikhs and the Muslims. What did they, they wanted to fight now, isn't it? That is why they had a lot of anger because when earlier the Britishers were very good and now the Britishers are fighting. So, the six Muslims and the Hindus went on to fight with the uh, British. One second. They went on to fight with the British. Did you understand till here? I will brush it up again for you. After this, uh, who had to accept the defeat? These people of Punjab had to accept what defeat? Defeat because of a few traitor leaders. Okay, it's there in the textbook. You may refer. I'll just write it here for you. Traitor leaders. Traitor leaders are now these who betray you. They'll tell, ah, I will help you. And in the last end moment, they go away or play a double game like okay that's that that means to say what what i means to say is initially they'll tell you okay okay i'm in support of you i will support your team and i will be good to you in the end when you start playing or when you are about to lose they change the game that they or the words that they told okay because of these kind of leaders uh, the kingdom of punjab at that point of time had to if, uh, accept defeat with the britishers all right, let me write it over here itself. After this, they signed again another agreement or they signed another, uh, not a treaty as such, but a, a, a understanding between both of them. A agreement that was done, that agreement was known as Lahore Agreement. Lahore Agreement in 1800 and 46 because they lost defeat isn't it now and that uh, agreement was signed now what happened the Britishers tried to Britishers uh, won isn't it Britishers won and that is why they captured uh, Punjab and uh, I'll write it like this the British British uh, became the ruler of 
Britishers started to rule or Britishers became the ruler of Punjab. Let it, I put it very simple for you so that it will be easy for you to understand. Now, with this as British started ruling, Brit, uh, Punjab became an independent state or a dependent state of the Britishers. Okay, that is understood in this point, I will not write it again for you, it is there in your text you could read. Even after this, when the Britishers tried to uh, rule, the Sikhs were still very angry at what the English people had done. They wanted to fight back more because they wanted their territory back and that is, uh, that is why these Sikhs, what they did, these Sikhs, they tried to oppose the Britishers. They tried to oppose the British rule, okay? British rule that was happening in Punjab. After this, this opposition that was done, by, it was done by two people. I uh, will come to that two people. Let me brush it up for you again. Anglo-Sikh war began after the death of Ranjit Singh in 1839. Now, why did this uh, break out? Because of the political issue that was there in Punjab as to who will rule the kingdom, who will rule the territory next. If uh, the earlier there was no problem as such because there was a treaty of friendship that was signed, but Ranjit, as Ranjit Singh was no more now, the treaty of friendship also dissolves with his death. Did you understand this much? Okay. Next. The British uh, wanted to invade Punjab. How did they try to invade Punjab? By violating the Treaty of Friendship. This is the background point of the Anglo-Sikh War. In 1849, 45, sorry, 1845 December, the Anglo-Sikh War broke out between the British and the Punjab territory people. With this, what happened? This anger. Uh, the Punjab territory lost and this angered the uh, people at that point of time and I told you Ranjit Singh was a very secular leader and that is why the Hindu Sikhs and the Muslims got together to fight against whom? To fight against the Britishers. As they were all united at that point of time when their king Ranjit Singh was present or Ranjit King Singh was alive. But what they had to do? When they went on to uh, fight the Britishers, they had to accept defeat. They lost the battle with or they lost the fight with the Britishers because of some traitor leaders who betrayed them. Uh, I wish they would have given them uh, their uh, support and that's why Punjab, would have been, uh, Punjab could win the fight that was happening but it didn't happen. So, after this uh, they signed an agreement that was Lahore Agreement in 1840. 1845 they started, 1846 they uh, signed an agreement that is Lahore Agreement. After they signed this, the British started ruling Punjab or British became, Britishers became the rulers of the territory of Punjab. They still didn't, uh, the Sikh, Sikh people still didn't um, get away with their anger at that point of time. They wanted to uh, fight back again because they wanted their territory back and Ranjit Singh had kept them very uh, nicely. Ranjit Singh was a very good ruler. So what the Sikhs did? The Sikhs again went on to oppose the British in Punjab. Now there were two major uh, people who went on to oppose them. I will write it here. Two major people who went on to oppose uh, these Britishers were, this is the eighth point, okay, let me write it as ninth point. They were Chattar Singh Atariwala. Chattar Singh Athari Wala, where did he uh, uh, try to oppose? He tried to oppose in Lahore. And there was one more person, his name was Mool Raj. Where did he oppose? He opposed in Multan. Now all these places are familiar to you. 
uh, from the previous lessons or the previous classes that have been done. Two people who wanted to oppose Chattar Singh Atirwala in Lahore, whereas Mool Raj in Multan. Whom did they want to oppose? They wanted to oppose the Britishers because of the rule that they were doing here now in their territory. But what happened? What happened at this, at this opposition also? They got defeated. They got defeated with this opposition and uh, and the next governor general who came at that point of time was Lord Dalhousie. Who was the earlier one? Who was the earlier one? Well, Leslie, now it is Lord Dalhousie. What did he do? He came, Lord Dalhousie. He merged Punjab with the British Empire or the British territory that they had already captured. What did he do? He merged Punjab with what? With the he merged Punjab with the British territory, and this ended the Anglo-Sikh War. Did you understand so much? Important points, 10 points are there, you can easily remember them. The important things are it broke out after Ranjit Singh's death and the Britishers wanted to have political power. How did they wanted to have political power? By violating the treaty of friendship. And that angered the people there, the Hindus, the Sikhs and the Muslim went on to fight whom? Fight the Britishers. But what happened? They had to uh, lose or they got defeated and the British started ruling the kingdom. But this didn't stop these six and two people again opposed who were there, Chattar Singh Atirwala in Lahore and Mool Raj in Multan. Yet they got defeated and this territory of Punjab came under the Britishers. Uh, with whom, uh, with who did, uh, with the, the merging of Punjab and British, British territory by Lord Dal. How is he? Okay, he was the governor general. Next, next governor general. I hope you have understood the Anglo Sikh war. If you read it in your textbook, it's much more easier if you uh, re first listen to this and then read, it will be much more easier for you to comprehend. Let's go into the next governor general who came to India and what did he do? Unlike the same subsidiary alliance that was done earlier by Wellesley. What do you think Lord Dalhousie may have implemented here in India? And uh, I hope you remember the subsidiary alliance. It's not similar, but another uh, agreement or another policy that they had to follow. Let's come to uh, Lord Dalhousie. And what did he bring? His uh, uh, doctrine or his policy was called as the doctrine of lapse. Doctrine of doctrine of lapse. He came, Lord Dalhousie came into India as the governor general in which year? In 1848. Okay. As he came to India as the Governor General in 1848, what he did do? He wanted to put all the small Indian states that were there, all small, small uh, Indian territories that they were there. He wanted to merge all of them together under the British territory. Who wanted to do it? Lord Dalhouse. What? Uh, let me write it over here for you. What he wanted to do? He wanted to merge the princely states with whom? With the British Empire. He wanted to merge the princely states with the British Empire and he, he adopted this doctrine of lapse. Under this doctrine of lapse, what does it say is, 
if uh, if the king has any adopted child okay let me write it for you here adopted children adopted children of the king will not go to the throne after the death of the king understand it if uh, if the king has an if the king has adopted any children and if the king dies the, the adopted child will not go to the throne or not will not become the successor to the throne after the death of the king let me write it here adopted children were refused the right to the throne did you understand adopted children were refused the right to the throne as in to say the same thing i told you earlier adopted children could not become the successors after the death of the king in other words uh, if any ruler was childless that means if he didn't have any child if the uh, if the ruler if the king didn't have any child he uh, his adopted children had no right no right over what no right over the throne now let me let me uh, put this together for you if the ruler was childless that means and uh, if he didn't have any children and if he had adopted any child the adopted child could not be the successor or could not go to the throne next after the death of the king that was a doctrine of lapse what did he do after this he wanted to i told you earlier he wanted to merge the princely states now some states he already merged at that point of time where satara nagpur sambalpur udaipur jhansi jaitpur now these were few of the states that he merged under uh, as he came because he wanted to merge i told you earlier that's what he merged the satara nagpur sambalpur udaipur jhansi jaitpur i think if you remember three four names together well and good for you and uh, this policy because most of these states i, I didn't have a uh, higher through the throne and that's why they had to merge themselves and take it away under the british territory and now why did he do this was he already knew that few of the states were of this kind that is that is uh, these kind of states at that point of time he already very well knew it that the ruler didn't have a child or the ruler had an adopted child and that is why it made him more easier to do what to make them sign the doctrine of lapse and to merge him. he wanted to merge it through the uh, policy of doctrine of lapse and this was a condition that he gave he very well knew that this condition was applicable to these states and that is why he trapped them inside this policy and initially he uh, tried to merge these states within the british territory now after he had implemented this policy uh, what happened there were some common people that were there at this uh, the, in these states isn't it they were very sympathetic towards or they had a kind heart they had some kind of feelings towards caring feelings towards the king and they tried to oppose whatever lord dalhousie was doing but what uh, happened the britishers were powerful by then they were already powerful and they could not uh, these common people could not oppose the britishers much as they had already controlled a lot of a lot of part lot lots of parts in india and that is why 
when these common people tried to rebel against the English or the company, they couldn't rebel uh, against them. Now, this, uh, all this uh, Lord uh, Dalhousie coming, all these policies or all these things ended in the first war of independence in 1857 or the Sipai Mutiny of 1857. All this is that is happening in India ended with the Sepoy Mutiny of 1857 or it is also called as the First War of Independence. Between the English and the Indian territory. With this I end the second lesson for you and we will see in the further lessons uh, how did we get, the, uh, get independence and how did we fight the first war of independence and uh, or also called as the Sepoy Mutiny. I hope you understood the entire lesson, the extension of British rule in India. Let me again glance through uh, the Anglo-Maratha wars, the three Anglo-Maratha wars that I told you the Anglo-Sikh wars that I taught you today and Lord uh, Dalhousie's doctrine of lapse whereas Lord Wellesley's subsidiary alliance. These are the important things that you have to remember. Let us see if you fill in the blanks uh, in your textbook, page number 15. First one, at the end of first Anglo-Maratha war, dash agreement was entered between Marathas and British. Which agreement do you remember? I will write it for you here. Which agreement do you think has been signed? Salbai. Okay, it is there in your textbook. Salbai agreement was being signed by whom? The Marathas and the British. The subsidiary alliance system was implemented by, next question, by whom? By Lord Wellesley. Lord Wellesley. Let us see the third one. The doctrine of lapse policy was implemented in the year 1848. The doctrine of lapse policy was implemented by, read the questions properly when you answer, implemented by whom? By Lord Dalhousie. Any other question that is there? Okay. Four fill in the blanks, Salbai Agreement, Lord Wellesley 1848 and Lord Dalhousie. I want you to focus on the subsidiary alliance, doctrine of lapse and the uh, background of Anglo-Sikh war and the leading of Anglo-Sikh war, also the Anglo-Maratha wars. Now your homework is to read the lesson before I begin the next lesson for you. Alright students, I will see you in the next class with the new lesson maybe in history or any other topic let's see uh, what's going to happen and uh, how we are going to move on till then uh, see you and take care